Section ten of the Girl with the Golden Eyes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. The Girl with the Golden Eyes by Honoré de Balzac. Translated by Ellen Marriage. Section ten paquita seemed to have been created for love by a particular effort of nature in a night her feminine genius had made the most rapid progress whatever might be the power of this young man and his indifference in the matter of pleasures in spite of his satiety of the previous night he found in the girl with the golden eyes that seraglio which a loving woman knows how to create and which a man never refuses paquita responded to that passion which is felt by all really great men for the infinite that mysterious passion so dramatically expressed in faust so poetically translated in manfred and which urged don juan to search the heart of women in his hope to find there that limitless thought in pursuit of which so many hunters after spectres have started which wise men think to discover in science and which mystics find in god alone the hope of possessing at last the ideal being with whom the struggle could be constant and tireless ravished de marsay who for the first time for long opened his heart his nerves expanded his coldness was dissipated in the atmosphere of that ardent soul his hard and fast theories melted away and happiness coloured his existence to the tint of the rose and white boudoir experiencing the sting of a higher pleasure he was carried beyond the limits within which he had hitherto confined passion he would not be surpassed by this girl whom a somewhat artificial love had formed all ready for the needs of his soul and then he found in that vanity which urges a man to be in all things a victor strength enough to tame the girl but at the same time urged beyond that line where the soul is mistress over herself he lost himself in these delicious limbos which the vulgar call so foolishly the imaginary regions he was tender kind and confidential he affected paquita almost to madness why should we not go to sorrento to nice to chiavari and pass all our life so will you he asked of paquita in a penetrating voice was there need to say to me will you she cried have i a will i am nothing apart from you except in so far as i am a pleasure for you if you would choose a retreat worthy of us asia is the only country where love can unfold his wings you are right answered henri let us go to the indies there where spring is eternal where the earth grows only flowers where man can display the magnificence of kings and none shall say him nay as in the foolish lands where they would realize the dull chimera of equality let us go to the country where one lives in the midst of a nation of slaves where the sun shines ever on a palace which is always white 
where the air sheds perfumes the birds sing of love and where when one can love no more one dies and where one dies together said paquita but do not let us start to-morrow let us start this moment take cristemio faith pleasure is the fairest climax of life let us go to asia but to start my child one needs much gold and to have gold one must set one's affairs in order she understood no part of these ideas gold there is a pile of it here as high as that she said holding up her hand it is not mine what does that matter she went on if we have need of it let us take it it does not belong to you belong she repeated have you not taken me when we have taken it it will belong to us he gave a laugh poor innocent you know nothing of the world nay but this is what i know she cried clasping henri to her at the very moment when de marsay was forgetting all and conceiving the desire to appropriate this creature for ever he received in the midst of his joy a dagger thrust paquita who had lifted him vigorously in the air as though to contemplate him exclaimed oh margarita margarita cried the young man with a roar now i know all that i still tried to disbelieve he leaped upon the cabinet in which the long poniard was kept happily for paquita and for himself the cupboard was shut his fury waxed at this impediment but he recovered his tranquillity went and found his cravat and advanced towards her with an air of such ferocious meaning that without knowing of what crime she had been guilty paquita understood none the less that her life was in question with one bound she rushed to the other end of the room to escape the fatal knot which de marsay tried to pass round her neck there was a struggle on either side there was an equality of strength agility and suppleness to end the combat paquita threw between the legs of her lover a cushion which made him fall and profited by the respite which this advantage gave to her to push the button of the spring which caused the bell to ring promptly the mulatto arrived in a second cristemio leaped on de marsay and held him down with one foot on his chest his heel turned towards the throat de marsay realized that if he struggled at a single sign from paquita he would be instantly crushed why did you want to kill me my beloved she said de marsay made no reply in what have i angered you she asked speak let us understand each other henri maintained the phlegmatic attitude of a strong man who feels himself vanquished his countenance cold silent entirely english revealed the consciousness of his dignity in a momentary resignation moreover he had already thought in spite of the vehemence of his anger that it was scarcely prudent to compromise himself with the law by killing this girl on the spur of the moment before he had arranged the murder in such a manner as should ensure his impunity my beloved 
went on paquita speak to me do not leave me without one loving farewell i would not keep in my heart the terror which you have just inspired in it will you speak she said stamping her foot with anger de marsay for all reply gave her a glance which signified so plainly you must die that paquita threw herself upon him ah well you want to kill me if my death can give you any pleasure kill me she made a sign to cristemio who withdrew his foot from the body of the young man and retired without letting his face show that he had formed any opinion good or bad with regard to paquita that is a man said de marsay pointing to the mulatto with a sombre gesture there is no devotion like the devotion which obeys in friendship and does not stop to weigh motives in that man you possess a true friend i will give him you if you like she answered he will serve you with the same devotion that he has for me if i so instruct him she waited for a word of recognition and went on with an accent replete with tenderness adolphe give me then one kind word it is nearly day henri did not answer the young man had one sorry quality for one considers as something great everything which resembles strength and often men invent extravagances henri knew not how to pardon that returning upon itself which is one of the soul's graces was a non-existent sense for him the ferocity of the northern man with which the english blood is deeply tainted had been transmitted to him by his father he was inexorable both in his good and evil impulses paquita's exclamation had been all the more horrible to him in that it had dethroned him from the sweetest triumph which had ever flattered his man's vanity hope love and every emotion had been exalted with him all had lit up within his heart and his intelligence then these torches illuminating his life had been extinguished by a cold wind paquita in her stupefaction of grief had only strength enough to give the signal for departure what is the use of that she said throwing away the bandage if he does not love me if he hates me it is all over she waited for one look did not obtain it and fell half dead the mulatto cast a glance at henri so horribly significant that for the first time in his life the young man to whom no one denied the gift of rare courage trembled if you do not love her well if you give her the least pain i will kill you such was the sense of that brief gaze de marsay was escorted with a care almost obsequious along the dimly lit corridor at the end of which he issued by a secret door into the garden of the hotel san real the mulatto made him walk cautiously through an avenue of lime trees which led to a little gate opening upon a street which was at that hour deserted de marsay took a keen notice of everything the carriage awaited him this time the mulatto did not accompany him 
and at the moment when henri put his head out of the window to look once more at the gardens of the hotel he encountered the white eyes of cristemio with whom he exchanged a glance on either side there was a provocation a challenge the declaration of a savage war of a duel in which ordinary laws were invalid where treason and treachery were admitted means cristemio knew that henri had sworn paquita's death henri knew that cristemio would like to kill him before he killed paquita both understood each other to perfection the adventure is growing complicated in a most interesting way said henri where is the gentleman going to asked the coachman end of section 10 recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey